Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica. I have got my sidekick, Georgia, with me. She's gonna be my calculator today. I'm very excited. We are in our geology and gemology unit, and today we are gonna learn a way that real scientists and gemologists determine if something is real or fake. So maybe somebody comes into the store and says, this is 100% diamond, and maybe it's glass. So we're gonna figure out how do people determine if it's diamond or glass? How can we measure that? And in fact, there's a really simple way that we can measure it, and we can build it at home really, really easily. It's not as precise as what you might find in an actual lab, but it works pretty well. And what you need to do to build this little machine is a kitchen scale, you need a bowl of water, you're gonna need whatever rocks you want to test. We've got some cool rocks. We have some things that we know about, like petrified wood that we can look at. You're gonna need a piece of string, some scissors, and a calculator, and then you'll need our handout of real or fake. If you're a patron of ours, you have this in your email inbox. If you're not, you can check us out at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. You can sign up to join our projects and fun. Now the way that this works is we are actually gonna measure the weight of the rock in the air, just straight on our kitchen scale, and then in water, and we can compare those two weights to determine if it's real or fake. Now people have done this for a ton of varieties of rocks. So on the back of our handout, there's actually a table or a chart that can help you identify. So if you know that, oh, this is supposed to be marble, you could look on here and you could find marble and you could make your measurements and see if it falls within that range. If it falls slightly outside, that's just us doing this in our kitchen. If it falls really far outside, that probably means it's fake. Now you can also do this for precious metals. So you could, we could look at, is a nickel really made of nickel? Because it might not be made of nickel anymore. Quarters used to be made of silver. And if somebody came into your coin shop and was like, I have a silver quarter, you would probably wanna know, is it truly silver or is it not all the way silver? And doing this test will help you find that. So what we're gonna do is when we weigh it in air and we weigh it in the water, we can use those two numbers to find something called the specific gravity of it. And that's because the amount that is, these rocks displace, so the volume, their density, is all a part of this measurement. And we can do that without actually having to measure the volume of this rock. It's kind of weirdly shaped. That would be kind of hard to do. So we can do this in a really simple way. So the first thing we'll do is we'll choose our thing. We're gonna do our petrified wood first, I think. And we'll turn on our kitchen scale. Do your project in grams and not pounds. So I'm gonna weigh my piece of petrified wood. It says 46 grams. So I'm gonna write down its dry weight. That's when it's dry, it's 46 grams. And I'm gonna write that on my top line for dry weight. Now we wanna find our wet weight. And so to do that, we are going to, I picked off the wrong piece Can you apparently. Put it in the water? We are, but we can't let it touch the bottom. So that's where the string comes in. Mm -hmm. We are going to tie a string around our petrified wood. Because if it touches the bottom, it's just gonna read the same as the dry weight. So we just want it to hang suspended in the water. So you'll put your water on and you'll do something called tearing or zeroing. Yep. You're gonna zero it out. And then we'll hang our petrified wood so it doesn't touch the bottom. Yep, you can hold the string. And you're gonna put it in so it's all the way under the water but not touching the bottom. And when you do that, you'll notice that it's gonna get a reading on our scale. I'm gonna wait till it's all the way under. Just a little bit more. There we go. And it's not touching the bottom. I'm gonna read it. It says 21 grams. So I'm gonna write that down as my wet weight. Why is it less? It's less because of the buoyant force of water. It's less because of the same reason why ships float. The, the wood is pushing out a bunch of water and that water wants to come back in and actually pushes it up. So it weighs less, which is pretty cool, right? All right, so Georgia is our calculator. She's gonna help us here. So Georgia, I need to know, what is 46 minus 21? Can you put that in on your calculator? 46 minus 21. And we're gonna find the difference between that. Nope, just 46. Mm -hmm. Minus 21. What do you get? Yep, and then hit equals. Ooh, something weird happened. 
We have 46 minus 21. 25. Perfect. Now we want to find our specific gravity. So we're going to take our dry weight, which I can look up here was 46, and we're going to divide that by the difference, 25. So Georgia, could you do 46 divided by 25 for me? So hit clear, and then pop it up here. I do 46. Uh-huh, and then divided by, yep, press that divided by button. There we go, and then 25. And then hit equals. And we get 1.84, and that is what we call our specific gravity. Now, petrified wood wasn't on our chart, so I did look it up beforehand, and it's somewhere between 1.7 and 6, and it has a huge range and that's because your petrified wood could be all different types of wood. So it sort of changes that a lot. But that is pretty cool. So now we found our specific gravity. On my sample name, I'll put petrified wood. And I could write some notes or descriptions about it. And we can do another one. And which rock? Do we want to try this volcanic rock? Um. Or should we try something else? What do you think? We Which rock would you like to do? The volcanic rock? All right, so now we're going to do a little bit. We're going to do our volcanic rock that we have. Now, volcanic rock, it could be, again, a lot of different types of rock. So this could be very interesting to see. So when I take my water off, I need to re-zero it. So George is going to tear it for me. Can you tear that for me? Hit the zero. And I'm going to write down on my sample name, I'm going to put our... We like to call this lava rock. All right, so let's measure the weight. Let's find its weight in grams. 18, 16. 16 grams, all right, that's our dry weight. That's our weight out of the water. And then Georgia, what do you think? Do you think it's gonna be more or less in the water? What did we learn last time? It probably will be less in the water. All right, let's see. I think this one I'm going to actually wrap this one is totally in the water. like a present. Ooh, we should have checked what it is in air first. That's okay. We could do that one next. I'm going to wrap this one. This one's a little oddly shaped. It's not quite as nice as the petrified wood, so I'm going to tie it up like a present to sort of make sure it doesn't fall out when we put it in there. Do you think it's lighter than it usually is? Yeah, sure. Now it's totally. All right. So now, Georgia, I need you to hit the tear for me. And you want to drop this guy in. And again, we want to make sure it doesn't touch the bottom. So as we find our wet weight all the way in, and we get 7 grams. Okay. And it's usually? And it's normally 16 grams. Once it touches the bottom, it goes back to its normal weight. All right. So now we want to do our math. And we're going to do 16 minus 7. George, you're going to go for the calculator. She's new to the calculator. Oh, wait, hit clear first. There we go. 16 minus 7. Nice. Oh, I'm not sure what just happened. Minus 7. And then hit your equals. And we get 9. Beautiful. So our difference is 9, and now we'll take our dry weight, which is 16, and divide it by 9. So it's 16 divided by 9. 16 mm -hmm. Beautiful. And hit our equal sign. Equals 1.77. 7777. All right, so we have 1.77. We could look at the back of this and see what we think it could be. Now, most lava rock is typically basalt, and this is saying basalt has a specific gravity around 3, so maybe it's not basalt. Maybe it's a different type of rock, which, if I'm looking, it's a little bit high to be coal. Uh, maybe it's like a sulfur or a sandstone, it might be sandstone that got lavalized, magma turned into magma and then dried out.
because again, our measurements aren't gonna be exact, but this is something that we could do and we could check out different things. For example, I think this might be marble. It kind of looks like marble to me and we could use this process to see if, is it close to marble? This is a fun way to check this has been used in history for a long time. Archimedes actually used it for a king who was told they got their crown made fully out of gold. And it turns out that the person who made the crown filled it with iron and just plated it with gold. Now, if you're paying for a fully gold crown, you're going to be pretty angry if, in fact, that crown is not fully gold because you really overpaid for it. So this is a way that we can see if things are really what they say they are or not. And again, some other fun things you could test are your nickels in your coin box. Is a nickel made out of nickel? And that is actually, down here we have the specific gravity of nickel, so that is something that you could test on your own. This is I hope box. that you had fun with this. I know that we are gonna test a few other rocks after we finish and wrap up, just to see what it thinks we will be. I hope you guys enjoy it. Go out, buy some rocks, and check out what it will be. Bye, friends.